Hi, my name is Carly Garner. I'm a futures and options broker with DeCarly Trading. We're located in Las Vegas, Nevada. If you have any questions, comments, concerns about anything we talk about today, you'll find my contact information here. And uh, you can reach us on social media as well. If you just search Carly Garner or DeCarly Trading, we will come up on most platforms. Um, we do post a lot of trading content, but we also post dog pictures, so beware. And if you're interested in learning more about trading futures and options on futures, I've written multiple books. If you go to Amazon or any major book outlet, you will find several books listed. Please only pay attention to these three. These are the newest editions, and I think you'll find them the most helpful. If you want to start trading futures from ground zero, I would recommend reading A Trader's First Book on Commodities First. That's going to tell you everything you need to know before you actually place a trade. Then considering higher probability commodity trading, that gets into market analysis and strategy development. And if you're interested in options, which uh, I will talk about some today, trading commodity options with creativity focuses on several option strategies, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And if you're interested in a free trial of our newsletters and our trading ideas and commentary, you can go to our website, decarlytrading.com and sign up for a free trial, or you can download our mobile app if you just search for Decarly Trading in your mobile app, app store. And before we start talking about uh, the markets, I wanna mention that there's a substantial risk of loss in trading futures and options. Trading is not suitable for everybody. This is a speculative venture. So there's no guarantees. We're not earning interest or dividends. There's no guarantees to come out on the right side of things. But the idea is you put the probabilities in your favor, control your position sizing, and hopefully you win more than you lose. When it comes to trading, there's no right or wrong way. Everybody has different personalities. Everyone has different account sizes, risk tolerances, goals. Um, so there's what works for one person may or may not be appropriate for somebody else. So everybody can approach markets differently and that's okay. Trading is a mental game. And so the most important thing is to make sure you're trading within your means and within your comfort zone so that you can make good and productive decisions. My personality caters more towards option trading because there's more room for error. So today I'm going to talk about a strategy that I recommended to our brokerage clients. We also offered an alternative strategy that, that did include buying of outright futures contracts using the micros as a position trade. So this isn't really a day trade. This is more of a swing to position trade. If everything goes perfectly, something like this might only be held two, three, four, five days. Sometimes it might take a month for these things to work out, or sometimes we're dead wrong and we have to aggressively hedge to prevent massive losses. So again, trading's not perfect. It's speculation. Bearish sentiment in the stock market is extremely market is extremely high at this particular time for many good reasons. There's We're uh, experiencing violence in the Middle East. Inflation is relatively high, although it's come down. Interest rates are sky high. Um, so it's hard to put a fundamental narrative together that's bullish for stocks. But the reality is normally this time of year, stocks tend to go up. In fact, October is known as the bear killer because a lot of bear markets, or at least corrections, end in October and we get a year-end rally. Maybe this year is different, but usually that statement does not hold water. Normally markets behave like they normally behave. And so that's generally what we expect them to do. MRCI, a seasonal service, suggests that buying on October 26th and holding through the early part of December has made money in the last 15 out of 15 years. So the probabilities are pretty good, of course. Uh, maybe this is the, the one year it doesn't work, but only time will tell. And so until that's proven to be the case. We're going to approach it as if the statistics are on our side. And, and here's how we recommend it to, to our clients to get involved with some room for error. You can see that the S&P has uh, a bit of a pivot line or a trend line, whatever you want to call it. And we've been approaching that here in the last couple of days. There's also, um, if you draw a trend line from this swing low that was down in April and May, it comes in around the same area, about 4130, 4100 in the S&P futures. Markets are messy. Maybe we go a little lower, maybe we dip a little below 4,100, but the overall picture is the odds are markets oversold. We've got some pivot areas approaching. We've got some heavy support. Seasonality is highly probable to the upside. As scary as it is and as uncomfortable as it is, it might not be a horrible idea to play the upside. 
One way to do it is by buying a vertical call spread. So buying a 4250 call, selling a 4350 call, and then selling a 3900 put to pay for that. This is, ends up being a, basically a free trade. Depending on where you get filled, it may even be a small credit, meaning the market pays you to take the trade. Now I'm gonna explain what that means in just a second. Um, but this position is intended to make money on a rebound up to the upper end of the trading range. So it makes money from 4250 to 4350. That's 100 points in profit potential or about 5000 on an E-mini S&P. To get that 5000, you'd have to hold all the way to expiration. I generally wouldn't recommend anyone try to do that. Um, if you can squeeze two, three thousand out of this trade in a short amount of time, it's generally a very good idea. Take your risk off the table and regroup. The risk becomes identical or similar, I should, I'll say similar to being long a futures contract if the market drops all the way to 3,900. If at expiration, the S&P is somewhere between here and 3,900, the trade basically breaks even. So no harm, no foul. If the market falls below 3,900, the trader is basically losing, I mean, it's a little more complicated than this because of option deltas and things, but you're basically losing point for point under 3,900. So it's like being long a futures contract below 3,900. At expiration, that statement's absolutely true. But the point is your unlimited risk doesn't come in until 3,900. If you were trading with a futures contract and you went long here, you could place a stop order, but it, stops are not guaranteed. I don't, I don't have time to go into what could go wrong with a stop. Stops usually work as intended, but they don't always work the way you expect them to. They can be hopped over, they can be slipped if things get volatile. But in any case, your risk is immediate. With this type of strategy, you're not gonna make as much money if you're correct. It's not gonna be as fast. Uh, the rewards are gonna be slower but you have roughly 300 points in error to be wrong. And that's a good cushion. I've seen the S&P move to 250 in a day on very rare occasion, but most of the time daily move is 20, 30 points at the most, um, a lot of times less than that. So giving yourself 300 points in error is pretty reasonable. I'm not gonna ever use the word safe, but you have a nice risk buffer built in. Let's look at the stats on this trade. So if you're interested in, in the terminology. We call this a bull call spread with a naked leg uh, or a naked put. And we're trading the December E-mini S&P futures. So again, we're buying the 4250 call, selling the 4350 call, and selling a 3900 put. And you might be asking yourself, why wouldn't you just buy the call? Then you have limited risk and unlimited profit potential. And I'm going to show you why here. If you look at the pricing, it's 76 points to buy the 4250 call outright. Each point's worth $50. So we're that we're talking like 37 to 4 3700 to 4000 on an option that's priced to lose and could very well expire worthless. That's a really big risk for an option buyer. You could also say why don't you just buy the 4250 sell the 4350 call and leave it at that. That way you have limited risk. Um, that is true, but you're still talking quite a bit of money. Options are eroding assets. They're priced to lose. And if you did it with just the vertical call spread, you're spending 40 points or $2,000. So again, you have a $2,000 risk that may or may not pay out. If you sell the put to finance the trade, you're using the market's money in exchange for accepting risk below 3,900. You might be of the mindset that you're willing to do that because if the market gets to 3,900, you wouldn't mind being long anyway. Because like I said, if it gets to 3,900, it's like being long a futures contract from that price. So that might not be um, such a bad scenario for somebody that's bullish and thinks that 3,900 would actually be a, a place to dig in and get even more long. The biggest benefit of doing it this way is, as I mentioned, if the market doesn't go as it as planned, if it doesn't go up, but it doesn't necessarily go sharply lower either. If it stays somewhere between 4250 and 3900, the trade expires worthless, but the trader loses nothing. Have you ever heard of a futures trader that has been wrong and still didn't lose money? I haven't either. In options, that's possible. Now that doesn't mean option trading is perfect. There are drawbacks. Um, the margin on a trade like this is 7,600. If the futures price dropped sharply, even if it didn't go below 3,900, that margin requirement would go up. And the losses on the trade, the paper losses on the trade can be pretty substantial, even if the market never surpasses 3,900. So it requires more than eight to $10,000 in an account to successfully put it on a position like this. You would probably want to put uh, at least 20, 25,000 in an account to do something like this. I know that seems like overkill when it comes to margin excess, but to be honest, that's actually probably on the lower end of it. 
ideally you may want even may even want a little more because the worst thing that could happen in a position like this is to get forced out due to panic or margin issues prematurely. This position has 50 days to expiration, so it's a relatively short-term trade. The idea is, again, we're trying to catch the seasonal upswing. These options expire in the middle of December. I mentioned the seasonality of this position uh, runs out in early December, so the timing is in line with what we're looking for. And I do offer uh, on our newsletters an alternative strategy. Some traders just simply can't stomach the idea of, of unlimited risk, and so I understand that. So you could just buy the options outright or buy the call spread outright, but those are much lower probability ventures because if we're wrong, we lose a lot of money as opposed to with this version of the trade, if we're wrong, but not too wrong, we don't lose much at all. One thing to keep in mind also is there are micro E-mini S&P options and futures. So you could do this exact same option spread with the micro options and have one-tenth the margin, one-tenth the profit potential, and one-tenth the risk. So that's a much more comfortable venture for most people. And it's a really great way to practice and get familiar with these types of strategies and, and markets. If options aren't for you and futures are, are what you want to do, these are these are pretty volatile times. Markets are moving quick. So one E-mini S&P future is $50 a point. And if, if you're looking to, to play stop loss orders to limit your risk, like I mentioned before, stops aren't perfect. But more importantly, most traders aren't comfortable taking a whole lot of risk on one particular trade. So what ends up happening is they put a tight stop. And it's sure they don't lose very much on that trade, but they lose a small amount of money on a whole bunch of trades consecutively and it becomes a really big uh, hole in their trading account. So if you are going to trade futures with this type of approach based on the analysis that we've done, I would say do it with micros and that way you can scale in. Uh, our charts are telling us somewhere, somewhere between 4130 and 4100 as a place to be a bull. And if we're wrong and that fails to hold, we may reach as deep as 3900. And if that happens and you bottom micro around 4,100, 3,900 might be the place to double up and add to your position in dollar cost average at that point. Just to give you an idea on a micro, you'd be out about $1,000 on that move. Thanks for listening. If you're interested in learning more about our brokerage services or trading commodities in general, visit us at decarlytrading.com. And if you're specifically interested in option trading, you can visit tradingcommodityoptions.com. And that's where you'll learn more about our, our option trading book. There are sample chapters and excerpts that would, will help you decide if it's uh, something you want to pursue. And once again, here's my contact information. If there's anything we can do for you, let us know. Thanks a lot.